Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today it is time for the first of top tier tweaks, a new feature that I'm hoping is going to be very useful to you. I'm going to try and do this um, a week or so before the next big tournament that myself and Jack are playing in. As a sort of way to look at the best decks in the format, what is currently the top tier, and how they're going to have to slightly adapt to remain on the top if they're going to be successful. Because as we all know, once you see the results of one tournament, people will adapt and change their lists. And it's a constantly moving process in Pokemon where you need to stay ahead of the game. So I'm hoping that the four lists I'll be showing today will be bang up to date and give you a good edge in the upcoming tournaments. And I'll be giving you one more sort of outside of the box pick as well for a bit of fun also. So the four decks we're looking at in the top tier right now, it's going to be Vicaray, Zoro Rock, Psychic Malamar and Buzzgarb. In no particular order, I believe these are the best decks in the format currently. So let's break down what I think needs to adapt about these lists. So let's start off with the Buzzgarb Shrine deck. This was the one that won Philadelphia Regionals. I've decided to up the count of Weavile to 2-2 two, two, as I, I'm expecting there to be more things like Psychic Malamar to be somewhat of an awkward matchup. There's also things like Delmize creeping into the meta as well in Vicaray, and the baby buzzes and the garbs really can get shut down by that completely. The Weavile is oftentimes able to still reach those numbers uh, thanks to things like Kukui and stuff like that. So uh, the new addition of Delmize really is a spanner in the works for this deck. So I think the Weavile is going to really help out. It's also just very good against Zoroark and is just a versatile additional attacker to the deck. It has meant that we've had to trim down the Mad Cargo line, which is a little bit unfortunate. Other than that, as we work our way down the list, I think the one copy of Field Blower I think is going to be, again, very important. I know that some Zorak variants are moving towards weakness policy, uh, so I think this is a very important addition. The supporter line is going to be based off of Caleb's list, where you have the really high Lily count, because it does still combine with the Mad Cargo. I have chosen to throw in an extra Cynthia for a little bit of consistency. And as we move down to the energy, we're going to be playing 10. I don't know if counter energy is staple, but I still think you need to expect mirror matches. And this is not a bad card for mirror. It lets you get into swing around turns, which can be very good for you. It also gets you into acid spray as well. Um, so I think it's a reasonable one to remain in the list. Um, but I can see this being cut for a basic energy of either psychic or fighting if you want to go down that route. From there, I think the cats are relatively stable. I'm not going to go through the entire list. I'm going to give you really a flavor of where I think the deck is moving into. And I think the biggest adaptation is taking that 1-1 one, one Weavile line, turning it into a 2-1, or in this case, a 2-2. Two, two. I think if you're still trying to fit those 2-2 two, two Mad Cargo, you can cut one Weavile, cut one Cynthia, and go back to the 2-2 two, two Slugs if you think it is really important. The only thing that goes on in my mind is that if we're going to be playing this Weavile line in a higher count, which I think is worthwhile, I think you physically need bench spaces to have multiple Trubbish, multiple Sneasel, and Buzzwalls as well. So I think just the 1-1 one, one Mad Cargo makes sense in my book. But otherwise, the list hasn't changed too much from Philadelphia, so do bear that in mind. Let's have a look at Vicaray. The big story is that now it can play Delmize to really help out against the Buzzgarb Shrine deck. In this current list, I'm only playing one copy, but you can go up to two if you wish. Uh, the biggest adaptation I've gone for here is adding in two Wishful Batons to the list. I think now that you have the Delmize to cover your matchup against the Shrine stuff, I feel like Baton is an extra addition to help you out against other one-hit KO decks. Psychic Malamar is using the um, Necrozma GX and the Marshadow GX to copy that to try and get one-hit KOs. And Zora Rock is the most popular Zoroark variant, uh, at least in the last couple of weeks at Cups in Philadelphia. So I think the Wishful Batons are going to be a great addition to this deck to remain powerful and make sure that you don't miss a beat against other one-hit KO decks. I think in total, the two Batons, one, potentially two Delmize can really help out in the meta right now. I think Vicaray is still very, very solid, very consistent with the high ball search cards, the treasures that you can use. I really like the disruptive aspect that you get from Let Loose as well. I really think this is just a very good beatdown deck. And with the additions of Delmize and Baton, we're really able to combat... Um, the other decks in the format. I think Vicaray is going to continue to be very strong. And again, everywhere else where you look about the list, other than the Batons being like, sort of the new tech, as well as the Delmize, um, I think everything else is as streamlined as possible. Uh, I still like playing the fan club. You don't need to have a full Lily engine. 
I think Fan Club does give you options, especially if you go second. You can go Fan Club into Tempest. Very, very strong turns. So I think we can expect other decks to be throwing in their own Let Loose Marshallows and Judges because of the power of this deck. That's maybe the only thing that's out of your control when you're playing this list. But other than that, I think Vika Ray is a very strong play and it does do a lot of work with that new Delmise. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Vika Ray going into the next few weeks. Let's have a look at Zoro Rock. Obviously, lots of different Zoro Rocks are viable and relevant. Uh, Zoro Rock has been uh, not necessarily the most successful at Philly, but it was the one that made the most spaces in the top 78 that we had. So on the broad spectrum, this is the one that's been getting the most success. For Pokemon, I do like playing the Diancie Prism Star. It combines with the Claw Slash to now one-hit KO these Baby Buzzes and Garbodors, so that's going to be very good for you. Um... I like playing Baby Buzz as well. Uh, it's additional help against Zorok Mirror Matches, which Zorok was still very popular overall in Philadelphia, so it's good to have this fighting typing. I think as we move down, the Great Ball Engine is one that I'm going to be supporting. Uh, you can consider playing a mixture of Friend Balls as well if you don't like Great Ball so much. We're only playing 18 in this list. Um, I've tried to up the lines to have a high chance of hitting the Great Balls, as you can see the third Lele, for example. Uh, in my own personal experience in Cups with Great Ball, I really enjoyed it in Zoroark. I really do think it helps you thin your hand size even earlier for these Lilies to start activating, whereas Timer Ball wouldn't give you that aspect. Uh, and in addition, it's almost like using a Sycamore and trying to hit a Pokemon off a Sycamore. If you think about Great Ball in that way, it feels like a much better card to play. So yeah, I like playing the 4-4-4 of the Balls. I think um, the newest... Uh, sort of thing I'd be looking towards is the weakness policies in Zoroark. I think weakness policy is really going to help out your Psychic Malamar matchup because they are very reliant on the Marsh Shadow GX uh, to make that matchup even close. Um, I also think this can be good uh, uh, putting it on your Lycanroc when you're up against Vicaray because they will otherwise try and use Delmise against you. So it's going to get a lot of value in Zoro Mirror matches because there's going to be other Zoro rocks around. It's going to be good against Buzzgarb Shrine because it means you can combat it with the Zoro arc much more safely. So we have the option to do the Devoured Field Riotous Beating, but we also have the option to Claw Slash plus Diancie. That's why I have the slightly lower count of stadiums because I have the option to attack with both. And you also have the Kakui as well. So you still have a good number of outs to get the KOs against them. But I think Weakness Policy covering Malamar, Buzzgarb Shrine, Mirror... Uh, and even Vicaray putting it on your Lycanroc. Like, it's a no-brainer when it's such a good card in all four of the top matchups. I think it's really important. So I like playing two Weakness Policy. As we move down, I'm choosing to play Apricorn Maker in this list. Uh, there's a, still a debate going on about Apricorn Maker and Fan Club. Apricorn does improve your outs for the Great Ball, which is something to be aware of because you're pulling two more cards out of your deck. It also means you're more likely to draw into things like... Uh, DC on turn two, and this deck, especially Zora Rock, really reliant on hitting energy attachments every single turn. It's going to be very helpful for you because if you start missing attachments, you fall behind. The Lycan Rock is never able to attack, so that's going to be really important. I also really like two Ace Roller in the meta right now. If the weakness policy is working and we're bouncing our Zoro Arcs, uh, that's going to be really nice to just reset turns. I think with Pal Pad, two copies is going to be nice. I could consider playing one and one uh, Max Potion as well if you feel like that, but. Otherwise, just the 4-4 energy count. One Kakui, this is sometimes a two of. One Judge, uh, at the moment I've got it in here just for the fear of Vika Ray. Uh, but at the same time, we could think about upping that to a second Kakui or a second Mallow or even a third Cynthia to your preference. So yeah, I think this is a pretty standard Zoro Rock. And I think the weakness policy is the biggest thing to take note of going into the future tournaments because that is going to be a very good card for you. Onto the Psychic Malamar, this really impressed at Philly. Uh, much more than I expected it to. As you can see, I've made the adaptation expecting Zorak players to be playing Weakness Policy. So Field Blow is going to be a really cool card for that. It can also get rid of uh, Stadium cards, which this deck had no means of doing so previously. So that's going to be pretty nice for you. Um, at the moment, I've cut from Rukan's list the Mimikyu. Um, I basically found it not hugely amazing. There are spots when it's good, spots when it's not so good. So I've cut it for now. But if you feel like you want to stay as toolboxy as possible, you could just cut down the 11th Psychic that I threw in to turn that into the um, Mimikyu if you feel like it. I think with Double Stretcher, the Deoxys, uh, we still have enough non-GX threats out there to deal with the Shrine stuff with not too much issue. 
And now we have the Field Blur as well. We can get rid of Shrines a lot more effectively and let Dawn Wings into the game because it's also a very good attacker in the matchup. I think I also cut the uh, Let Loose Marshadow from this list. I saw Rukan made a post about it and he basically said he wasn't going to be using Let Loose in a lot of situations. Um, so I felt like it was a fairly easy cut. At the moment, I've sort of gone halfway house and put in a Judge instead. So you still have the option with you know, eight ball search cards to find your Lele to judge against Tempest and stuff like that. Um, but it's not a guaranteed option. I could see the judge being straight up cut and then you just have no means of affecting your opponent's hand. But that always sounds risky. So at the moment, just the one. I've tried to simplify it even further than it always already was with Rukan by having less Pokemon in here because that seemed to be the clutter that I had when I was testing this list. Putting in the Orangru as well really helps you out uh, smooth smooth over the entire game really just because you do get to low hand sizes with the amount of discard you have i feel the monkey is definitely worth the bench space as opposed to something like the uh, let loose marshallow which is a one-time deal so yep pretty nice marshallow still seems pretty okay i think it does have to be concerned about the amount of weevil creeping in um because they can respond on your they have just a lot more pokemon that can keep trading on the deoxys so that's something to be aware of um, it also means that the Dawnwings isn't super safe for a lot of the game. I think if you're playing against the Buzzgarb Shrine, you need to deal with the Macargo. I think when you're up against Zoroark, your Marshad is going to be the lead guy. Against Vicaray, you're going to be trying to uh, use your Prismatic Bursts and also try and stay in the game with the Moon's Eclipse GX if you can't judge them out of the game. So this deck still has options for the other big three right now, so that's definitely... Worth noting, and I think it's still a reasonable contender going forward. So that is going to be Malamar. So those are the four decks. Um, a few tweaks here and there. Vicare, I think Wishful Baton really helps out these two matchups, the Psychic Mally and the Zora Rock. And I think with the Delmize, you have this covered. Uh, the Also, the Baton really helps in mirror matches as well. And that's something to really bear in mind. Zora Rock with weakness policy is good against all these three decks. Psychic Malamar playing Field Blow are going to help you stay in the game against the Zora Rock players. Uh, get sort of sh annoying shrines and stuff like that if you just had to put have to put down your lele those sorts of things uh the buzz garb adding in the weavile gonna help out against malamar zoroark and vikare so all round again just nice techs so pretty much everything adapting to compete with each other i think is going to be necessary for the success of these decks and if you're looking for an outside the box play here's one i was thinking of vika bulu it was actually heavily played in philadelphia not to great success but I think in the meta, now that Delmize has been discovered, you can see we're playing two copies in this list. Um, you can really punish, again, you can punish Lycan Rocks. You can punish the Buzzgarb Shrine deck with very, like, really easily with this list because you're going to have even less abilities on the board. You can have one Vika Vault, sometimes a Lele. That's about it because the Bulu doesn't even have an ability either. So you should be able to crush the Shrine decks and you have the one-hit KO option against... Rayquaza GX and if they're not playing Batons you're going to win that matchup because they will run out of stuff and uh, even then you know you're just a little bit ahead a lot of the time because you're the big one hit KO machine um, I've tried to make it consistent and simple because I think the package of this deck is enough to be good in the meta right now playing the four order pads for a bit of extra spice um, just because I personally like playing it in this deck because it is inherently a bit less consistent than the Rayquaza version because you don't have Tempest um, and you have no Mysterious Treasures so you have less outs to your turn one Lele. So now having these order pads are going to help you get into those turn two candies and Vika Vaults and all that good stuff. So I think this is a really reasonable play. You have one hit KO potential. You have good typing and answers to Shrine decks. Um, you have one hit KO, so that's pretty much all you need in the meta right now to keep up with the top four, and I think the typing is strong as well, so that's my outside of the box pick, bring back Vikabulu with those four order pads, could be great fun, Delmize is turning out to be a very important card in this meta, let me know what you guys think about this new series, and uh, what you think about the tweaks I've made to the top lists, good luck to you in any cups upcoming, and see you guys all in Frankfurt, cheers.